Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. This is a 12 volt emergency roadside service toolkit that plugs into your cigarette lighter socket or a car battery and comes with it now the infamous or at least internet famous egg beater style impact wrench that rumor has it punches way above its weight. As well as an electric three ton jack for lifting your vehicle. So we're gonna measure that three ton claim on a floor jack hydraulic tester. And of course, torque test the little KitchenAid mixer looking impact wrench and throw a 10 grand high speed camera setup its way to see its inside workings slowed way, way down. And finally disassemble it to explain why a tool like this can do what it sometimes does. Because using all this sensitive equipment on a funky $100 Amazon toolkit sounds amazing, really. This stuff is stupid fun for tool nerds like us. This type of tool comes in many names from overseas brands such as e -Hilp, M Plus, and Beatrow. And in any form it comes in, whether it be TikTok, YouTube Shorts, or the channel itself, you likely have single cams to thank for knowing about it. A real OG in the impact testing world of the interwebs, and you should go check the channel out if you haven't already, where you can see power tools being tested in their native junkyard habitat. And if you're not familiar with this curious looking guy from the six, seven, eight million plus views this tool has garnered stoking people's curiosity, let me introduce you to the song of its people. It may not be quick, but it's spicy. And that, what you're seeing here is, yeah, that's all she had. This is broken now, it won't turn back on. Not calling it quits here though, there's way more to learn. Turns out our cigarette lighter adapter is the culprit, no longer making a good connection, even if directly hooked up, it won't turn on its little power indicator light. So just by splicing some wires on the fly, we're able to bypass this and hook it up directly and we're back in business. This three ton roadside electric jack though, this is a curious one. Admittedly, those Widowmaker looking jacks that car manufacturers pack into your trunk are not exactly a high bar to best, but this could just be an electric faster acting Widowmaker. Let's find out. As you might expect, it turns a threaded rod in the center to compress or expand the scissor arms to raise or lower the vehicle. So it's going to visit this floor jack hydraulic tester made for this sort of thing to see what it can do. Wow. And yeah, that's about three tons. Here is it just pushing down for full beans, no pausing on the trigger finger. I know this is technically saying 30, but it's just over three tons here in between the two and four hash marks over here on this scale, which is made for much bigger jacks. I'm gonna leave it there now. So for passenger vehicles, maybe not heavy trucks, looking okay so far. We're gonna leave this on here to check back in an hour, see if it drops. Really not bad so far. I'd even say it would be fairly convenient changing a tire roadside, assuming we don't see it fail catastrophically. Okay, on to the main attraction, the egg beater impact. Our tests are timed, so perhaps at a disadvantage on something like this that takes its time for sure, but let's see it. It can get hung up at times, but the timer is set and that's all the time it has to make in this first test. Let's see what it can do. One hundred and twenty one foot pounds. That's that's not a ton, but also not horrible. Here's what a one hundred and seventy dollar Milwaukee M12 compact impact can do using the same voltage. Really not all that much more despite the weird curve differences and that's from a tool around 3,500 impacts per minute. This thing impacts about 100 to 120 times a minute, one to two times a second. That's about one foot pound per impact. The Milwaukee is only bringing 0.039 foot pounds per blow. That difference in kinetic energy should move the needle when things are tighter. So let's see that. On to the best case scenario tests versus that same Milwaukee from before, then we'll see what it can remove given perhaps unlimited time. Two hundred and fifty seven and right in there at the end on tools with dramatically different impacts per minute as these two. 
about as apples and oranges as it gets, you really see the difference dynamic torque or force per blow makes at the end of the curve where both are fighting harder for gains on tighter stuff. But the egg beater just seems to do it more effortlessly, if you ignore how it sounds and operates, of course. How it does here at the top also insinuates it should do well to remove pretty darn tight stuff. This gem is rated for 480 newton meters, which is 354 foot pounds. Let's see if it can remove 400 with no time limit. We're gonna play this at 200% speed, at which point it will still not sound anywhere near like a normal impact. So yes, this is about 40 seconds worth of Uggas than Duggas, but the M12 wasn't able to loosen it at all, really. It requires we find a DCF921 compact to loosen this level, and even then it won't go much further than this. And if you're on the roadside or even at a junkyard needing to take off an axle nut, it's not really a timed competition. This probably will work. And here's at just over 700 foot-pounds, and after a full minute and 20 seconds, this had to be stopped because this thing was smoking at this point. But it was making some progress. This is about the level you usually need a high torque. Only a small handful of mid torque impact wrenches that go north of $200 can remove this. So what makes a 60 some odd dollar 12 volt cigarette lighter impact tick? Opening this thing, you'll find an impact hammer mechanism unlike any traditional power tool. It's pretty simple. You might not be surprised to find a brush motor, a gear reduction, this pancake looking hammer assembly that rides on a bearing, then an anvil, the square end drive that's completely independent of it and not interacting with that pancake assembly, at least in its default position. This is different from both cordless power tools that interact with the anvil and hammers at least twice a rotation. No real way of getting around those hammers without hitting them and then jumping over from coil spring pressure. And also different from air tools that among other designs often use a twin hammer that impacts both hammers once every rotation, every time, no free spinning. So anyone with ears would figure out that this thing spins up and then wax the output shaft. But how does it do that? We intend to find out first with our go-to method of backyard surgery, creating a window into this tool and seeing what can do now with our high-speed camera. This will simply allow us to see it working before we fully disassemble it. So here it is taking on a lug nut in 4K nut then it slips off and spins up again to start slapping and doing its thing. Now moving into the shop, we're showing you this at regular film speed. You can see the voltage drop making the light dim with each blow from the motor having to spin up again. And here's in the shop at 3000 frames per second with 30,000 lumens pointed at it. The white line on one side might help to visualize just how often the rotation is happening. Now here's 5,000 and even higher frames per second. Watch at how far backwards this assembly rotates after each hit. Definitely helps to explain why it takes so long to then hit again. And here, pay attention to the springs. I'll show you this a few more times. Definitely seems like one end of this bracket tilts down like a rocker, then catches, and the spring has the task of suddenly pulling it back so that it can spin past the anvil again and gain speed once more. Dissecting this weird looking assembly tells us the rest of the story. Let's take a look. So it's a pretty simple design. You got two wings and these just act as rockers. They can rock side to side, even though they're captured in this window. But what prevents them from doing that normally is the springs on either side. Now why you would want them to rock is it pushes the hammer down to catch the dog on the anvil. So most of the time it's sitting flat and the anvil's free to spin like this. But when it tilts down, it pushes the hammer down to engage with that hammer, and it hits. What causes that eventual tilt is centripetal force. The faster this thing spins up, the more it'll tilt in the direction that it's spinning and eventually catch that hammer. And then it will return to being flat again due to that reduction in RPM and allow it to spin once again. So here you have the anvil, you can see the one wing on it right there as it spins around. And this is the hammer. 
This hammer rocks back and forth on this pin that's staked into here, and it tilts like so. You can see how it would normally sit flat, but one side weighs more than the other. So as it spins up, centripetal force pushes the heavier side out and catches the hammer as it spins around, which then slows down the whole assembly, which then the springs counteract and keep this flat again. But sometimes it gets stuck, so it'll spin and spin and spin. You kind of need to whack it in place, and then it starts working well again. But all that spun up mass actually results in quite a lot of kinetic energy transfer. So there you have it. Really simple design, super heavy mass allowed to spin up to high speed. No difficult advancing spring to overcome like on most cordless impacts, so you don't need a ton of current or an expensive motor to operate this. Then a sudden imparting of that stored flywheel energy into a single hammer blow, which makes for big time dynamic torque force per blow power, which means stuck stuff, rust, harmonic balancer bolts that you're normally fighting against, crankshaft rotation against. It's oddly really suited for this type of stuff. Own that three ton 12 volt car jack. One hour later, it's holding around two and three quarter ton. Not too shabby. A good floor jack would still be around three tons here. So maybe I wouldn't climb under the car using this thing. It's no jack stand, but a spare tire here and there. Yeah, I think I'll throw this in the trunk actually. Don't buy the beat row one here just because its connection failed in short order, but there are plenty of other fun names with the same designs that do maintain a connection, it seems just fine. Appreciate you joining us for this one. We make episodes at least every Friday. Subscribe if that sounds like your jam, and thanks for watching.